Hello out there everybody, Manny here at Area 503. Greetings to you all from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. We just want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to watch our videos. Without you, our viewers, we wouldn't be here. So thank you for your continued support. Today we're going to be talking about some recent announcements in science and technology. Way back in episode 1, we spoke about a Muamua, our first known interstellar object. Wow, it seems like so long ago. If you want to see how much our channel has grown since we started, check out that old video. <laughs> Anyhow, an amateur astronomer has recently discovered another interstellar comet named 2I Borisov. Originally identified and tracked earlier in 2019, the comet was photographed as it recently passed by the Sun. Check that baby out! The readings from Hubble suggest that the comet is made of the same sort of base materials as our own solar system. Which is fascinating because again, 2I Borisov originated in a completely other solar system. Now, 2I Borisov is moving at about 110,000 miles per hour relatively. Now, this means it's moving far too quickly to be captured by our sun's gravitational pull and it is going to escape our solar system. Check out these photographs of 2I Borisov. You can see the object clearly reflecting sunlight and you can clearly see the telltale signs of the coma, this venting of gases. This thing is truly beautiful. I wonder where it came from and where it's going. It's a shame we couldn't intercept this dang comet and put a tracker on it to find out. <laughs> Anyhow, check out the side-by-side -side comparison of the trajectories of 2I Borisov and Oumuamua. It appears as if they are both coming from the same general direction. And they both appear to be traveling at similar speeds. However, Oumuamua's exit trajectory is actually increased by the sun's gravity, and it came much closer to the Earth. This really makes me wonder if these two objects originated in the same location. I guess we're never going to know because both Oumuamua and 2I Borisov are set to leave our solar system, never to return. So just like these two interstellar visitors, we're going to move on. Which brings us to our next piece. Data sent back from the Voyager 2 spacecraft as it leaves the heliosphere show a wall of burning plasma. So where exactly is all this happening, you might ask? Let me show you. This is Earth, our big, beautiful planet. But you see, relative to the other objects in our solar system, the Earth really isn't that big. And next to the Sun, it's tiny. <laughs> Let's zoom out so we can see the orbits of the planets. Zoom way. Way out. And we finally see the orbits of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And outside of that is the Kuiper Belt a massive belt of asteroids outside the orbital path of most of the planets in our system. Beyond the Kuiper Belt lies the Oort Cloud, a massive sphere of comets and space rock that encompasses our solar system. And then outside the Oort Cloud lies the Heliopause, or the edge of the heliosphere, which is our Sun's sphere of influence. Now, energy that's exiting from the heliosphere is interacting with cosmic energy and creating this massive plasma fire in space. It boggles me that life can exist in such hostile environments. Every day I learn something new about our world, and it never ceases to amaze me. This discovery of a massive fireball at the edge of our solar system is just the latest discovery. And I knew I just had to share it with you all. But for now, let's go ahead and move on to our next topic. Which is that scientists have discovered that the supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way may have a second black hole orbiting with it. 
That's right. It's been long known that Sagittarius A is a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. Now, scientists believe there may indeed be two such black holes at the center of the Milky Way. Wrap your head around that. Sagittarius A is about 4 million times the mass of our Sun, and this second black hole could be up to 100,000 times the mass of our Sun. That is a huge amount of matter, all in one place. It truly is mind-boggling, and to me, it's more than a little alarming as well. You see, it wasn't that long ago that scientists first documented the collision of two black holes. Back in 2018, two such black holes were recorded as they smashed together, releasing massive amounts of gravitational waves. Now, what concerns me is that if that happens at the center of our galaxy, the resulting disruption would most certainly cause destruction throughout the whole galaxy. Now, while I find this extremely alarming, there's truly nothing we can do about it. So there's no use worrying about it. So let's go ahead and move on to our next topic which was the recent announcement that a test satellite named Capstone is being sent to the location of the planned Gateway Station. The Capstone satellite is being sent to test the artificial intelligence needed to maintain the orbit for the Gateway Station. The Gateway Project is a part of NASA's planned return to the Moon, and it's also going to be a permanent station in lunar orbit. Its purpose is to serve as a stopping and transfer point for lunar destinations. Gateway Station is going to be made of multiple segments. Some are going to house astronauts. Some will host a lab for scientific experiments. And there will be other ports to accommodate visiting spacecraft. There's also going to be a lunar landing module attached that will shuttle people up and down from the station to the lunar surface. The Gateway Project is only the first step in NASA's journey to the moon and then continuing on to Mars. This is an ambitious and aggressive program to push the expansion of humankind and I find it extremely fascinating. Go NASA go! <laughs> Anyhow, we will be talking more about the Gateway program in later episodes, so keep your eyes peeled for those in the future. And that brings us to our next piece, which is this article detailing a successful voyage of a self-driving truck from California to Pennsylvania. That's right, this self-driving commercial 18-wheel truck delivered a full load of butter from one end of the United States to another. Self-driving cars are coming, baby. Where am I? You're in a Johnny cab. Hell of a day, isn't it? The fare is 18 credits, please. Sue me, dickhead. We hope you enjoyed the ride. <laughs> <laughs> and autonomous vehicles are just the start. Here's another report detailing the use of artificial intelligence and 3D printers to print homes for families living in poverty in Mexico. Now these houses don't look too bad either. Hell, I'd live in one of them. Come print them in Portland. This is an amazing advancement. I wonder how long it will be before the rest of the world recognizes the benefit of affordable housing for everybody. Hmm. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We live in the most exciting era of human history. I am grateful every day to be alive during this time frame. And I'm happy to have you all along with me on my search for universal truth. Well, guys, for now, that's all the information I've got on space exploration and technology updates. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503, and I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth.